when you were a kid, didn't you love going to the fair and driving the bumper cars? Well, on boats, we don't really call them bumpers. They should be called fenders. But hopefully your boat doesn't hit the dock like you used to hit your buddy. Stick around for Fender 101. Hi, I'm Sean from Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. And if you leave your boat tied to a dock at any time, whether it's all season long or temporarily while you're at a marina or visiting friends, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the right fenders, the right number of fenders, and you have them attached properly. And we see all the time where boats have too few, probably too many, and maybe in the wrong position on the boat or not high enough or low enough. So in today's video, we're gonna just go through a few things that'll help keep your boat safer while tied to the dock. If you're a boater or thinking about being one, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel as we do tons of content that'll help you and your boating every day of the year. So the first thing I would say is always make sure that you have more fenders than you actually need. When you're tied to a dock, you may be able to get away with two fenders three fenders or four fenders, but you're gonna to wanna to have at least one or two extra for the inevitable losing one, and you wanna be able to replace it with something quickly. Sometimes you forget to bring them in and they fall off and they're gone. Sometimes maybe they aren't tied properly at the dock and they actually, in a bit of a wind, they'll come loose and go missing. So make sure you have one or two extra just in case. The other thing that can happen is life brings you friends. And if you're out at someone's raft up or you're at a dock and, and visitors come by, Often people will raft up or tie alongside you and it's really nice to have extra fenders to help keep your own boat and their boat protected. So if you need three, maybe have five or six. If you need four, maybe you want six or eight fenders on board. The second thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure you have the right size. So go to the manufacturer's website and there's a few, TaylorMade, Polyform, Dolphin, Dock Edge, they'll have a size guide for the size of boat and the size of fenders you're gonna to wanna to have. If you aren't too sure, make sure you ask your local marine dealership and they'll help you out. After that, you're gonna to wanna to look at color. Do you wanna match the boat? An example of a black hull and a black fender or a white hull and a white fender. Or are you more worried about cosmetics? Because certainly a white fender is going to show the dirt more than a dark fender like a black or a red. So keep that in mind. After you determine the size, the color and the number of fenders, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the right attachments for it. There are hundreds of different boats out there, so we can't tell you how your fender should be tied to your boat. But what we can tell you is make sure that you have the proper line, not too long, probably somewhere between four and eight feet of fender line, and that you have a way to attach it, either to cleats, to stanchions, or potentially to fender adjusters like these ones here. So once you've determined the number, the size, color of the fenders, now you're gonna to wanna to position them on the boat properly. And if you notice, almost all hulls, except for pontoon boats, will flare away from the dock towards the bow. And what that means is if you put the fenders too far forward, they're really not gonna do anything because if you've tied your boat properly, and check out this video here for a video on how to tie your boat properly, including spring lines, the bow of the boat will be held out naturally by the way you tie it. So you're going to want to put the majority of the fenders towards the stern in the middle of the boat. So really anything further ahead than this, as the hull curves away, is going to be less useful. And because there's more weight, and more displacement towards the back of the boat, you're gonna to wanna to put the majority of your fenders further back because as the boat gets pushed against the dock, that's where the majority of the weight is because of the equipment and the engines that are on board. So space them out relatively evenly, making sure that you don't have any large spaces that aren't protected, and make sure that they are primarily tied on the back two thirds of the boat. So now that we have them in the right place, and we have the right size, color, and everything else, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're the right height. And that's really gonna depend largely on the dock you're tying to. If the dock is high, you're going to wanna to pull the fenders up relatively high on the boat, potentially not even using the traditional cleats or fender holders and tying to other objects on the boat to get them up to protect the gunnel. If the dock is low, like in this case on the floating dock, you're gonna to wanna to have them as close to the water as possible to protect against the shorter dock, but not so far down that they're moving around. If we drop the fender 
you'll see that they float. And what that'll allow them to do is move around front, forward and backwards and potentially get kicked up on top of the dock. If you have them too high, they really don't protect very much and can slide up on the dock, leaving your boat exposed to getting damaged. You really ideally, if the dock is the right height, want it just touching the water and or just floating a little bit. So don't look like a newbie and ask for fenders, not bumpers when you go into your local marine store. Make sure you have the right number, get extra, get the right size, and keep them on board the boat just in case you need them. Thanks for watching today's Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more, and we'll see you out on the water.